The Pledge of Allegiance by Mercedes Cabrera and Victor Calderon. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Words appear over images of the BPAC. ASDB Media proudly presents Arizona State School for the Deaf and Arizona State School for the Blinds. Principal Kelly Creasy is on stage. Graduation ceremony, May 21st, 2020. Principal Kelly Creasy is joined by an interpreter. Good afternoon to all the family and friends, ASCB staff and students, and our graduates who are watching this video. I never imagined when I last saw you all on March 13th that we would never return to campus after spring break. In just a few short days, our whole world changed. Suddenly, we were living in a world where an invisible enemy confined us to our homes. We were living in a world where toilet paper was a sought after commodity. Our world was turned upside down and we had to face the reality that everything that we had planned was not gonna happen. We should have been sitting together in the bee pack celebrating this huge milestone in your lives. And I hope that we're still able to do that. But for now, we are honoring you through this video. We are all so proud of each of you. Nothing can change that. This video is our special tribute to you. Today we are celebrating the achievements of Alec, Jose, Juan, Manuel, Marcos, Santana, and Victor. Each one of them has gained academic skills, matured emotionally, and grown physically. From being members of our sports and academic bowl teams, to participating in JTEC classes, learning new skills in our work education program, participating in Braille Challenge, or sharing their talents on stage. This group of young men have taken full advantage of every new learning opportunity presented to them. They are ready to embark on their next step of their journey, and we are excited to see where they land. Alec will be attending Pima Community College taking academic classes with an ultimate goal of earning an associate's degree and transferring to NTID RIT with an interest in the area of technology and the medical field. Jose is planning to take academic classes at Pima Community College and seeking employment. He has an interest in working with children. Juan will be attending the Savvy program in Yuma, Arizona and seeking employment in the areas of radio broadcasting and or culinary arts. Manuel, our ASD valedictorian, has not decided on a post-secondary program. He is considering Fort Lewis College, Tahana Autumn Community College, and Pima Community College. He plans to attend a program with an interest in coaching, indigenous studies, and physical therapy. Marcos will be working with developmental disabilities for work in a supported employment setting in Rio Rico or Nogales. Santana has not decided on a post-secondary program. He is considering Haskell Indian School, Tahana Autumn Community College, and Pima Community College. He plans to attend a program with an interest in coaching and indigenous studies. Victor, our ASB valedictorian, has relocated to Las Vegas, Nevada, and will be attending the College of Southern Nevada to become a translator interpreter. What will be the legacy of the class of 2020? It is a question many have asked. You've been witness to a great deal in a very short amount of time. You've seen communities rally together to support first responders, local businesses, and those in need. Families have figured out ways to stay connected and teachers have figured out ways on how to deliver educational opportunities to their students. You've seen the best of what our country is capable of. Unfortunately, this pandemic has also exposed the inequities that still exist. There are still communities without running water, internet access, 
or readily available health care. What will be the legacy of the class of 2020? My hope is that you continue to contribute to what makes this country great and that you find a way that you can make a meaningful contribution to start addressing the inequities. You were born in the shadow of 9-11 and you are leaving high school in the midst of a pandemic. Please find a way to make a difference. Make that your legacy. There's a story I would like to share with you. It was inspired by the writing of Lauren Isley. Isley was a very special person because he combined the best of two cultures. He was a scientist and a poet. And from these two perspectives, he wrote insightfully and beautifully about the world and our role in it. Once upon a time, there was a wise man, much like Isley himself, who used to go to the ocean to do his writing. He had a habit of walking on the beach before he began his work. One day he was walking along the shore. As he looked down the beach, he saw a human figure moving like a dancer. He smiled to himself to think of someone who had danced to the day. So he began to walk faster to catch up. And as he got closer, he saw that it was a young man and the young man wasn't dancing, but instead he was reaching down to the shore, picking up something and very gently throwing it into the ocean. As he got closer, he called out, good morning, what are you doing? The young man paused, looked up and replied, throwing starfish into the ocean. I guess I should have asked, why are you throwing starfish into the ocean? The sun is up and the tide is going out. And if I don't throw them in, they'll die. But young man, don't you realize that there are miles and miles of beach and starfish all along it? You can't possibly make a difference. The young man listened politely. Then he bent down, picked up another starfish and threw it into the sea past the breaking waves. It made a difference for that one. His response surprised the man. He was upset. He didn't know how to reply. So instead he turned away and walked back to the cottage to begin his writings. All day long as he wrote, the image of the young man haunted him. He tried to ignore it, but the vision persisted. Finally, late in the afternoon, he realized that he, the scientist and the poet, had missed out on the essential nature of the young man's actions. Because he realized that what the young man was doing was choosing not to be an observer in the universe and watch it pass by. But he was choosing to be an actor in the universe and make a difference. He was embarrassed. That night he went to bed troubled. When the morning came, he awoke knowing that he had to do something. So he got up, put on his clothes, went to the beach and found the young man. And with him, he spent the rest of the morning throwing starfish into the ocean. You see, what the young man's actions represent is something that is special in each and every one of us. We have all been gifted with the ability to make a difference. And if we can, like that young man, become aware of that gift, we gain through the strength of our vision, the power to shape the future. And that is your challenge, that is my challenge. We must each find our starfish. And if we throw our starfish wisely and well, I have no question that the legacy of the class of 2020 is going to be truly wonderful. Congratulations, graduates. We are so proud of you. ASD graduate Jose Velasquez appears on screen. He begins to sign an ASL. Song name, Lean On Me. Text appears, Lean On Me by Bill Withers. Sung by Caitlin Carnes, Cayman Izel, and Crystal Quintero Romero. ASL by Jose Velasquez. The song begins and multiple students are seen on the screen. Sometimes in our life, we all have pain. We all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me. When you're not strong, and I'll be your friend, I'll help you carry on, or it won't be long, till I'm gonna need 
somebody to lean on. Please swallow your pride. If I have things you need to buy, or no one can fill those of your needs that we won't let you. Just gonna call on me, brother. If you need a hand, we all need somebody to be on. It's just I might have a problem that you'd understand. We all need somebody to be on. appears. It reads, Student Performance, Keanu Yazzie and Victor Calderon Avendaño. Both students are on screen together. I entered the world in the wake of 9-11. I graduated during a pandemic. I am more empathetic than other generations. I am independent and inclusive. I am hopeful but yet realistic and I see the world for what it is. I understand that the celebrations will have to wait and I am okay with that. I am mature beyond my years. I am proud of who I am. An animation appears, it reads, Who's your favorite teacher and why? On screen is Jose Francisco Velasquez Acuna. My favorite teacher is Clarice West. She was a good teacher. I learned a lot from her in math and in writing. And when it was hard for me, she encouraged me to keep going. On screen is Manuel Wayne Gonzalez. My favorite teacher is Colt because he's been around ever since I was a freshman in high school up until my senior year. He was also my coach. So I knew him in the classroom and on the basketball court and out on the field. On screen is Santana Wayne Gonzalez. I would say, can I pick two? I can pick two, right? Okay, first I would pick Mary from Work Ed and then Colt. First, the reason why I chose Mary is because she reminds me of my aunt who has passed on. She reminds me so much of her. I like the way that she's supportive of me and any student that works with her. And Colt. I picked him as my favorite teacher because he has been with me for four years starting at my freshman year. When we were on the basketball court or the field, even in the classroom, he's taught me a lot and gave me good insight about his perspective on mainstream schooling and a lot of different things that I thank him for. On screen is Victor Calderon Avendaño and an interpreter. I, I, I really do like Rob Bazzetti, Rob Bazzetti, he, is, he has been awesome, um, he really 
he really does like to have fun with his students and he likes to really get to know them and just make every day a really interesting day with his class. He He's always fighting for his students, he's always standing up for them and I can say that for every teacher at that school. It's it's He's really, he's just, he's funny, he's always asking you how you are and if, if anything's wrong he'll try to fix it with, and he'll always try to make you smile. Um, so I guess, I guess you have to be my favorite teacher. An animation appears. It reads, what's your favorite memory from high school? Victor is on screen with an interpreter. I guess one of my favorite memories would be when we went, we all went to the uh, uh, ropes course. It was really fun. Um, I, I made it all the way up to that, that pole that you have to walk across. Um, I actually made it all the way up to that, but I couldn't make it through the zip line. But it was still a really fun memory that I always like to go back to and just just remember all the, the, the good times we had over there. Manuel Gonzalez is on screen. My favorite memory of high school is winning three straight championships in a row and making great memories with my friends. Say Velasquez Acuna is on screen. Favorite memories of mine would be all the good times I had with all my friends and teachers. An animation appears. What do you appreciate most about your high school years? Manuel is on screen. The thing I appreciate the most is my brother being by my side, knowing that we had each other's back. Jose is on screen. High school really made a difference in my life. I appreciate all the learning experiences I had all throughout my high school years. I had a good life at ASDB all throughout my high school years. Alec Ramon Ramirez is on screen. ASDB has helped me to grow as a person and be more social. I have options for accessibility through ASL and the ability to connect to the deaf community. ASDB also taught me to be assertive and come out of my shell. When I was younger, I used to be shy, and now I can approach people and talk to them. An animation appears. It reads, Kid, you'll move mountains. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way! A photo slideshow begins. We see Jose Velasquez in his cap and gown. On the right and left sides of his photo, there are two baby pictures. Next we see Juan Garcia. There is a photo of him now and photos of his baby pictures. Next we see Victor Calderon Avendaño in his cap and gown and two baby pictures. Next, we see Marcos, Adrián, and Sinas in his cap and gown and three baby pictures. Next, we see Manuel Wayne Gonzalez with his coaches from basketball and two baby pictures. Next, we see Santana Wayne Gonzalez in his basketball jersey holding the Tohono O'odham Nation flag and two baby pictures. Next, we see Alec Ramon Ramirez in his cap and gown and two baby pictures. An animation appears. It reads, Valedictorian Speeches, ASB Valedictorian Victor Calderon. Hello everyone. Welcome to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2020. First of all, I'd like to say that it is a pleasure to have this amazing honor to speak to all of you. Well, graduates, we have officially completed our four-year high school journey. Though we aren't able to be with each other face to face, we all join in unison today to celebrate all of our accomplishments. Our high school years went faster than the speed of light, but we still have a whole lifetime ahead of us. High school graduation is only the beginning of our success. This day is probably an emotional day for everyone. It definitely is for me. But graduates, this is also a day of celebration and a day where we can say we did it. We all tried our best to be dedicated to our academic studies, as well as finding and building relationships with others. I know we're all very excited for this moment. We've waited for four long, hard, but also fun years for it. I won't
want all of you to know that I wrote this speech not just for myself, but for all of you. I was born in August of 2002 to two loving parents who found out I was blind at birth. My eyes were very little and even the tiniest amount of light would make me cry. My parents were afraid for me and they didn't know what to do. Doctors tried to help with surgeries, but after many months, my eyesight was gone. I was also born about a month premature as I was supposed to be born in September. It's funny, my dad, and I ha my dad and I had the same birthday and my mom always said that I wanted to come out early because she was making some really good food for his birthday and I wanted some. It's always an inside joke between her and I. The doctors told my family that I would never be able to do anything. They said that I wouldn't be able to walk or talk or do anything for myself. One of them even got mad at my mother for saying that he was wrong about me. Well, here I am, celebrating this moment with all of you. Here I stand with all of you, the valedictorian of my class. When I was growing up, my mom would always tell me what was happening around me. This led to my catchphrase that I used for many years. What's that? I was homeschooled for about three years of my life. Many of my teachers brought me toys to express how I was feeling and to sense the world around me. Eventually, I got to learn Braille. First, I started with simple books, and I even got my first Braille writer. After that came kindergarten, and the world became much bigger. When I entered public school, my knowledge only grew even more. Life has gone by extremely fast. One moment, I was attending my first day in kindergarten, and before I knew it, I was in high school for the first time. I went to public school for most of my life. It was useful and fun, but it was sometimes crazy and frustrating. Many of my public school teachers were willing to work with me and learn about what was best for me to do my best in, this, in their classes. However, there were some teachers that were not patient and were not keen on learning about my needs. Public school taught me to be independent and to always try my best. My biggest obstacle, however, was the bullying I experienced over the several years. I heard about ASD from one of my cousins and I had no idea there was a school for the blind. I thought that all blind people went to public school just like me. I considered moving to Arizona to try this school out, but I was really nervous to start all over in a brand new place with brand new people. Would they like me? Would I be able to make friends with them? I would be surrounded with people that were just like me, but I was still nervous. Eventually, I overcame my fears and I decided to take that chance. I moved to Arizona in August of 2018 I started at ASDB in October. I have to say, I didn't regret a single thing. In ASDB, I've thrived. I've done things that I've never thought I'd do. From the moment I got to this school, everyone has treated me like family. I made some of my best friends at this school, and I even met the love of my life. I've learned so much, and I feel I've gained more independence as well. This year, this year to everyone's surprise, including mine, I took a culinary arts class in the Joint Technical Education District, known as JTEC. Cooking has always been something that I've wanted to do better in, and I'm happy to say that this class has proved provided nothing but the best. Not only have I gained more academic knowledge in school, but I've gained more life experience, and I know that if I really set my mind to something, I can and will accomplish it. Well, I have so many people to thank for this amazing experience. First of all, I'd like to thank my mother, Leticia, and my father, Hugo. Without you guys, this would have never been possible. Thank you for always in, in, uh, supporting my decisions and for always being there when I needed you. Thank you for allowing me to come to this school and try something new. Most of all, thank you for all the love you've given me when I was down. Muchas gracias a mi papá. Los amo. I'd also like to thank my brothers, Kevin, Daniel, and David, for always being my eyes and for encouraging me every step of the way. Thank, thank you to my sisters, Jaylene, Celeste, and Ariana, for allowing me to be part of your family and for always bringing out smiles and having fun. You girls are awesome. To my nephew and niece, Davidito and little Leticia, I hope I get to meet you two very soon. I'd like to thank my cousin, Melanie, my tia Ara, my tio Gonzalo, and their family. 
my tío Pancho, my tía Eva and their kids, Daniela, Alex, the twins and uh, my um uh, Daniela, Alex, the twins and Angel, my tía Rosa, my tío Alex and their kids, Lexi, Tito, La Gorda and Bianca, my aunt Bonnie, my uncle Jay, and my cousins Matthew and Andrew, as well as my tía Titina and my tío Salvador, my tía Juana and Elia. And finally, my tios Carlos, Miguel, and Jorge, and their sisters Juani and Ana. And thank you to so, so many more of you. Thank you for your kind words, great memories, encouragement, and showing me that I can be whatever I set my mind to. And thank you to my grandparents, Salustia and Carlos, and my chawela Victor, and my chawela Lupe, as well as my great grandparents, Angelina and Papa Chu. Thank you for all accepting me as I am, and for all your love and affection. Lastly, for my family, I'd like to thank my puppy Coco. She passed on Tuesday, May 5th, 2020. She was only four years old. She was always a great motivation for me. She would always give, give me a smile and she would never let me be sad. Miss you, Cupster. I'd like to thank all my teachers, Mr. Bozzetti, for always putting a smile on my face and for making every lesson fun and weird at the same time. Thank you to Mr. Sims for showing me so many awesome and new stories to read and for always lending an ear to whatever I had to say. Thank you to Mr. Campbell for making my worst subject, math, easy for me and for always giving everyone a good laugh. Thank you to Chef Corinne, who is always willing to help and for showing us all the delicious dishes we can cook by ourselves. Thank you for showing me that I can cook and that I can do it as well as any person would say. Thank you to Paige. She was one of my staff in, in my dorm who helped me all through the year with her jokes and her advice. Thank you to all the staff, dorm staff, our counselor, Ms. Brown, our o and instructors, and everyone who has helped us navigate this amazing school. We really do appreciate all of you. I'd also like to thank my friends, those in this school and those who I've met throughout my life. Thank you to Christian for always listening to me and always helping me when I needed it. I can safely say you've become my best friend. To my friends, Cami, Bryce, Kyle, and Elvin, thank you for making high school life easier and for always being my friends when I felt that was too awkward. You guys are the best. And thank you to my friend, Karina. I know things have been hard, but thank you for showing me how to be strong and that even that I'm blind, I can strive to become better than I am. Finally, I've saved the best for last. I'd like to thank the girl of my dreams, Alessandra. I met her my first day at ASDB and I fell in love at first sight. It's crazy how we've been together for almost two years now. She's taught me so much about life. She has been my cheerleader from day one. Even when I'm feeling down, she's always there to comfort me and to remind me that life's too short to be sad all the time. She is so smart, happy, sassy, and always willing to help anyone in me. I can't express how much she means to me, but from the bottom of my heart, thank you, baby. You really mean the world to me, and I'm being honest when I say that I truly and deeply love you. Now, graduates, it's time to take this new road that awaits us. It's been a long journey, but we've gotten better and stronger because of it. We will face new challenges, but always remember this. If we can pull this off, then imagine the things that we can do. Everyone, big or small, vision or no vision, hearing impaired or not, can change the world in so many ways. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be easy, but whenever life tries to close in around you, remember you can always accomplish whatever you want. All you need to do is put in the best effort that you can. Well done, graduates, you earned this. And always remember that a new adventure is always waiting. Never stop being who you are and always remember to have that spark of creativity that all of us have inside. I'd like to end this with a quote by Kerry Washington. Your life is your story and the adventure ahead of you is this journey to fulfill your own purpose and potential. Congratulations again, graduates. Thank you all. An animation appears. It reads, Valedictorian Speeches, ASD Valedictorian, Manuel Gonzalez. Good afternoon, family, friends, and my fellow 2020 classmates. My name is Manuel Gonzalez. I come from Sells, Arizona, in the Tahana Atom Nation. 
My mother is Yvette Gonzalez, and my father is Boyd Asagueda. Me and my twin brother, Santana Gonzalez, have been attending ASDB since we were two and a half years old. We would drive an hour and a half to school every day for 14 years, which meant we were on the road driving for three hours every day. So I would like to thank our driver, Reina Pablo, for driving us all these years. Reina and all the ASTB staff, they got to see us grow up to be young men. Also, I want to thank my mom for everything she's done for me, including waking me up every day for school. With that being said, I would like to thank my family for always being there for me when I needed them the most. They were always on the sidelines for my games and cross country meets, rooting for us to do our best. Without you guys, I would not have gotten to this day. So without your support and your hopes, I truly wouldn't be the person I am today. The person I really want to thank the most is my twin brother. Thank you for being the twin that will always have my back and be there for me no matter what. Till this day, we've both come a long way. Little brother, I want to tell you this. No matter what you do in life, you will always make the best out of it. You will succeed in life. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't, because you can. I love you so much, little brother. To my classmates, we've had our ups and downs, but that did not stop us from graduating. For the ones I grew up with, I will miss all the memories we've had growing up. That's something I definitely will not forget about you. We've all helped and supported each other to make this day come true. And now we're here walking across the stage and getting our diplomas. So we now need to celebrate all our hard work and for finally accomplishing high school. I'm so blessed to have you guys all in my life. I never have said this before, but today I want to tell you guys that I love you and thank you for all that you've done for me. We made this day come true. So I want to tell the class of 2020 you will be successful in life. Just believe in yourself so that the support from me will never stop. You can do it. Again, I love you guys, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for you all. To my teachers and staff, I wanna start off by saying thank you for the challenges you've given us. It's helped prepare me for my future and helped me gain knowledge Thank you for all the hard work. Also, I want to thank you for giving us your time to teach us what is important for our future. I will never forget our good memories we've had. To my coaches, Gerald, Colt, Eddie, Rolando, and Brian. I want to thank you so much for allowing me to play under your wings and to carry on the game. I want to thank you for teaching me that life is not always about sports. 
It's also about getting an education. You all taught me how to be a student athlete by maintaining my grades in order to play a basketball game or to be able to run a cross country meet. You also taught me a lot about leadership. Without my coaches and teammates, I would not know what it takes to be a great leader. You guys taught me a lot about taking responsibility and by being a leader, by carrying the ASDB team. Throughout my high school years, our basketball team has won three WSBC championships in a row. You guys are like my second family. I will never replace you for anything. The last thing I would like to say is thank you ASDB for teaching me all the things that are important to better my future. Thank you for all the memories I've had there at ASDB campus. Arizona State Schools for the Deaf and Blind will always be my home. I will miss coming every day to learn and to see new faces. I love you, ASDB. ASDB proud. Now, before I leave, I want to tell you all that I will be attending Tahana Atam Community College to continue my education and my sports career. I am majoring in early childhood teaching and I'll be on the cross country team. Thank you, your valedictorian, Manuel Gonzalez. Manuel's speech fades into a video of class of 2020 white crates filled with senior swag. Surrounding the video are pictures of the senior lawn signs mate. They read, Arizona State School for the Deaf and the Blind honors our class of 2020 seniors. Congratulations, student. Hashtag Sentinels got this. That fades into video of teachers signing and saying the graduates' names. They take a diploma from the left side of the screen and pass it to the right to the next teacher and then to the principal, Kelly Greasy. Jose Francisco Velasquez Acuna. Victor Calderon. Marcos, Adrian, and Sinas. Juan Ramon Garcia. Manuel Wayne Gonzalez. Congratulations, Santana Wayne Gonzalez. Alec 
Ramon Ramirez. An animation appears. It reads a message from Superintendent Annette Reichman. Hello, hello. I am Superintendent Annette Reichman. And I just wanted to say congratulations, Class of 2020. You have worked so hard over many years and you are finally ready to graduate from high school. That is amazing. I'm sure you know that ASDB and PDSD have a long held tradition of hosting graduation ceremonies for the senior class every May. Family, relatives, friends, and others fill the auditorium and our seniors line up on stage to receive their high school diploma while we all celebrate them. But this year, things are different. In March, we had to close the schools. You all have had to stay home and continue your courses and homework online, interacting with your teachers, other students, and your friends over Zoom. This year, we have broken tradition. We are not having our big graduation celebration. Instead, we're starting a new tradition, online graduation. This week, we recorded each part of your graduation ceremony to be shared online. Tucson Campus also sent letters and gifts to each of the seniors. Phoenix Campus teachers and principal all loaded up in their cars and drove in a caravan to each senior's house to present them with their diploma, a gift, and to congratulate them. It's a new tradition. What will you do now that you have finished high school? I hope that in the fall, you will start school again, whether it be college, university, or a technical school. You can even take online courses to continue your education. If you choose not to go to school, you can look for a job. Of course, we want you to be safe. Wear a mask, practice social distancing, and wash your hands regularly. You need to do those things, but you can still try to find a job. If you don't want to go to school or find a job, you could stay home and sit around doing nothing. No, don't do that. Do something. It could be something like starting a hobby, such as arts and crafts, drawing, painting, sculpting, pottery, cooking, baking, making model airplanes. Use this time to develop a new skill and think about your future. Continue to think about school and where you would like to work. Don't give up. The future is yours. Focus on yourself. Again, congratulations, class of 2020. An animation appears. It reads a special message. Millie Simmons, Hollywood actress, is on screen. She begins to sign. Hello. Congratulations to the graduates of 2020. Thank you for having me. I want to say, and I know you've heard this many times already, but this is a crazy time. There have been many disappointing and sad moments. You couldn't have prom and other dances, sporting events, and all of your trips were canceled. We've all missed being around our friends. This is a time we should be celebrating our memories and our achievements in high school. This is a really important part of your life. But for me personally, 
I learn more from disappointment and sadness than from my achievements. When I'm down or someone makes me feel bad, I realize how strong I am and what I can do. When I was growing up, I noticed that there was no one on screen like me. There was no one using my language. It was only me, my family, my teachers and classmates who signed. Never anyone on screen. And I didn't understand why. I love storytelling and drama. My drama class would tour and perform in sign language. And it was really fun, but I never thought that I could become an actor. I thought it was impossible. When I went on a movie set for the first time, I was really scared. Like, really scared. I was scared and I was worried that people would not understand me or believe in me. I still had plenty of support, but I was the one who decided to go for it. I worked harder and that gave me confidence and made people confident in me. And now, I love what I'm doing, and I feel so fortunate to be doing it. I love seeing my language on the TV screen. I'm thrilled that kids like me can be inspired when they see themselves represented on screen. That is my inspiration now. I want you to know that whatever you want to do, whatever you love to do, I want you to pursue it whether it's acting, sports, medicine, anything. You can do it. We are the future generation and we can change people's minds. It doesn't matter how young we are. This is a unique and difficult time, but it's also a time when we need to examine and fix the mistakes of previous generations. We can change the world so that everyone is included in sports, science, government, media. Everything can be inclusive. Let's do it. I want to challenge you to find what you love and do it. Find your passion. Follow your gut. Set goals for yourself and do whatever you need to do every day to achieve those goals. I want you to work hard, respect everyone, be honest, and have fun. Congratulations, graduating class of 2020. Thank you so much. I wish you the best of luck. An animation appears. It reads, Class of 2020. Principal Kelly Creasy is on stage holding a cap and tassel. Class of 2020, it is now time to move your tassel from the right to the left. You've officially graduated. Congratulations. An image shows caps and tassels being thrown into the air and falling to the ground. 